Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's assembly. I'm actually up at our church this morning. One of the things that we've been doing during lockdown when we've not been able to use our building is we've done some decorating that needed doing. And so in our children's room, we've had a new mural painted, which I thought I'd share with you because I thought you might enjoy it. It's really cool, isn't it? So today's assembly, it's all about, well, I was going to say it's one of my favourite stories, but I know I say that every week. But it's all about standing up for what's right, for what you believe in. And I love this story because for me, it really challenged me about, do I do that? Do I stand up for what's right, even if nobody else will? And that can be really hard sometimes, can't it? And that's what we're going to hear about from James in a minute. But before we do, we're going to have our song for today. We're going to have Jesus, you're my superhero. So enjoy it, guys, and you'll see James after the song. over the past weeks haven't we about God what he is like and what he can do we discovered that God created everything out of nothing how amazing is that then we discovered that God is a God of immense power he sent fire from heaven to prove that he was the living God and last week we discovered that God is a God of love and compassion. We heard how he provided for a heartbroken mom so that her children wouldn't be taken into slavery and she would have enough to live on. This is a God worth following. 
and through the Bible we find that there are many people who do but we also discover that there are many people who don't follow God and because of that it has always been difficult to stand up for God to do what is right to do no, to do what he wants us to do and in our story today which comes from Daniel chapter 3 we're going to find three young men who chose to do the right thing even though everybody around them was doing the complete opposite. It was a decision that put their very lives at risk. Was it worth standing up for God? Let's find out. Our story begins in the city of Babylon with a very proud king. His name is Nebuchadnezzar. Now, the Babylonian Empire was the most powerful empire on the whole planet. And so Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful king in the world. And he knew it. And he was very proud of himself. And one day as he was looking over his great city of Babylon, you can see the, the, the entrance wall and the Ishtar Gate. If you go to the British Museum, you can see a replica of it. As he was looking out over his empire and thinking how great he was, he decided that it would be a good thing if everyone in his empire also knew how great he was. And so Nebuchadnezzar decided to have a statue built. We don't know quite what it was like, but it was absolutely massive. It was covered in gold. And knowing Nebuchadnezzar, I suspect that this is what his statue looked like. It was put up on the plain outside Babylon. There we go. A giant gold statue of himself. And after the statue had been built, he sent a letter out to all the important people in Babylon and said, come to the city of Babylon and we will have an, an opening ceremony for my great statue. Now, this king was the most powerful person in the world. And nobody refused him. So on the date that the king had set, everyone who was anyone turned up to see this great statue that the king had built. They came from far and wide, from every tribe and language. They gathered on the plain outside the city of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar called forth his herald, here he is, and said to the herald, tell him what to do. The herald in a very loud voice said, when you hear the trumpet blow and the band start to play, everybody is to bow down and worship the great statue of our king. And then he stood back. Nebuchadnezzar scowled and he kicked him and said, tell him the rest, tell him the rest. The herald took a deep breath and said, and anyone who refuses to bow down to the great statue of our king will be thrown into the blazing furnace where they will die. The king smiled. That was good, he said to his herald. That'll make sure it happens. So, when the band was ready, the herald blew his trumpet, the music began, and everybody 
bowed down to the great statue on the plain. Everybody who was anybody bowed down because that's what the king had told them to do. But not quite everybody. Standing up amongst that vast crowd were three young men. Their names are quite strange. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Now they had been brought as captives from Israel. They'd been trained in the University of Babylon. They'd been given jobs in the government. And the Babylonians hated that. And when they saw that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were not bowing down to the idol, they rushed to the king and said, Oh king, live forever! Because that's how you talk to kings in those days. There are three people who refuse to obey you and to bow down to your idol. They are men from Israel. They do not worship our God. Nebuchadnezzar was furious. Get them here! He shouted. Shadrach... Meshach and Abednego were brought before the king. When he saw them, he recognised them. He, in fact, had done the final test at the university and discovered that they were the, the wisest men he had come across. And he was disappointed that they wouldn't bow down to their idol because their lives now were at risk. He scratched his head and said, guys, he said, um... Maybe because you come from Israel, you didn't understand the instructions. I'm going to give you a second chance. Um, we'll start the band again, and then you can bow down to my statue. The three young men looked at King Nebuchadnezzar and shook their heads. We worship the true and living God, they said. We cannot bow down to your statue. We believe that our God can keep us safe against you, against the fire. And even if he doesn't, they said, we would rather face death than bow down to your idol and do what we know is wrong. Nebuchadnezzar was so, so angry. He had the three young men arrested by the guards. He had them tied up and taken down to where the blazing furnace was. He was so angry that he shouted to the guys in charge of the furnace, Turn it up, he said, seven times hotter than it ever has been before. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were tied up and thrown into the blazing furnace. The furnace was so hot that the man who threw them in died. King Nebuchadnezzar went to see them burn to death. The thing is, as he looked into the furnace, he saw something extraordinary. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were fine. They were walking around inside the furnace. He turned to his herald and said, hey, how many people did we throw in there? And the herald said, oh, king, live forever. Because remember, that's how you talk to kings back then. We threw three men into the fire. Why then, said King Nebuchadnezzar, can I see four people walking around in the flames? He stared harder and he said, one of them looks like the son of God. Nebuchadnezzar was astounded. These young men worshipped a God who had 
protected them in the fire. They were fine. They were safe. Surely this God was an amazing God, a God who could protect. And so he shouted to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, come on out, come on out. And sure enough, they walked out and stood in front of the king. The crowd gathered round. And the extraordinary thing is they couldn't find any marks on Shadrach, Meshach or Abednego. Their clothes were fine. They weren't burnt or singed. They were okay. King Nebuchadnezzar went and, and dressed the crowd. And he said something extraordinary. Listen, he said. The God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego has proved himself to be a God who protects a powerful and awesome God. No one in my country is to say anything against him. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego trusted God. They knew that God could protect them, but they also knew that God was sovereign, that God is in control and in charge, and they were willing to trust him with their lives. And they discovered that God is a God who protects. They did the right thing. They stood up for what they knew to be right. And God protected them. Another great story there from James and a brilliant prop as well. Now, I love Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. I think the names are brilliant. But I also think they're a real challenge for us that they're great guys, that they were willing to stand up for what they believed in. I think it's really important to know what we're all about, what we believe in, so that when tough choices come, we know what we want to stand up for. I don't know, maybe somebody's getting picked on in the playground or being called names and everybody's doing it so we think we might join in, but we know it's wrong. If we know that it's wrong, let's stand up for it and say, do you know what, I'm not going to do that. Or even better, guys, that's not cool, let's not do that. Which is what Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were all about. And part of it was the most important person for them was God. The God's laws and God's rules were the right thing for them to do. And so they stood up for it no matter what. And they got real respect for it. And often we find that happens, that when we stand up for something that's right, it might be hard, but other people actually respect us for it. And we're the type of friends that they want to be. We're going to hear more about this God who protects in all of those times, because God promises that when tough times come, when tough choices are there, that he'll help us that he'll be with us every step of the way. And so let's have a look at what today's verse says to us. Today's verse is taken from Psalm 46, verse one, which is a poem to God, all about him being somebody who protects as a shelter, somewhere we go to to be safe. It says, God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So let's say that together after three. One, two, three. God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Psalm 46 verse 1. Okay guys, well done. That's brilliant. It's time for our closing prayer now. So if you're ready with our prayer drill, it goes one, two, three. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for our assembly times. We thank you for James and all the work that he's put in and the props that he's got to help us understand and know more about these stories. And we pray that like in the story today, that you'll help us to be people that stand up for what we believe in. That no matter how difficult it might be, uh, that we will try and do the right thing and that we'll encourage other people to do the same. And I pray that you'll help us do this difficult thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Four. Great. OK, guys, it's time for this week's craft. Again, if you want to download the resources, they're available on the website or also in the description on the YouTube channel. Uh, so back over to James and I hope you enjoy it, guys. And I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Welcome to the craft room. Well, I hope you enjoyed the craft last week. It was a bit more challenging.
but worth the effort. This week we've been thinking about these three young men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Now, when I was an awful lot younger, um, I was taught a way to remember their names. And it went like this. This was shake the bed, make the bed and to bed we go. That's pretty rubbish, isn't it? But a couple of years ago, I heard a different way of remembering their names. And it, it's a, a, a lot cleverer, I think. So the new way to remember Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is my shack, your shack and a bungalow. <laughs> All right, then. It's not that good, is it? So what happens? Well, here we have these three young men who are willing to trust God, even though they're in difficult circumstances. And when we turn the circle, we discover that um, God honoured their trust in him and he sent his son to protect them in the furnace. And then we can bring it back to the original picture. What do we need to make this? Well, we don't need an awful lot this time. Um, we need the colouring pencils. We need a pair of scissors and a stapler. I think that's it. So we'll get them out of the way. And then, of course, foolish of me, you need the printout. Now you should be able to get that from the website. You can download it onto paper or card. It works a bit better with card, but it, it doesn't really matter. So the first thing you have to do, hang on a minute, I'm ahead of myself, is to cut the four shapes out. Um, you'll see they're labelled A, B, C and D. Now, the difficult thing to th get, do is to cut very neatly into this slot. So there's one there, one there, one there and one there. So cut them all out and then we'll be ready to put them together. So here we are. We have my pieces. A, B, um, C and D. And you'll see that A and B make a picture and C and D make a picture. So how do we put it together? Well, we pick up A and we pick up B and we put B over the top and we slot those two slots together. OK, so now we have the second picture. Then we grab number D or letter D, sorry from the second set and we slide that slot over the top and to the side okay it looks very peculiar now so what you have to do now is you have to hold b and d together pick up c and slide c between a and b and that slot will go up into there okay now you line up c and d and a and B. Now let me get that all lined up. See this is made out of paper, not card. Now you have the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Um, they trust God and God protects them and he sends his son to keep them safe. And then we turn it back if it will go. There we go. It's all coming a bit loose and back to the middle. Now it does tend to slide around a bit. So what I suggest you do is line up C, no, D, no, C and D, that's right. So you can have a, a proper picture like that. And then you just staple those tabs right at the bottom of the tab like that. Then you open it up. Now you've got to be careful here until you can just see that image. So now you line them up so it, it looks right. There we are. So we get the whole of the face there. And holding that carefully, you staple A and B together again at the bottom. Now, this is where you have to remember what to do. Once it's like that, you take D and you bring it all the way round again, like that. And then you're at the beginning. What do you do next? Obviously, you colour it in. There we go. Now, Christine coloured these in and she's brilliant at doing that. So there we have the story of three young men who trusted God and they found out or they discovered that God was a God who could protect them because they believed in him. I hope you enjoy the craft. <laughs>